The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of themorganreport.com with the weekly perspective for the week ending 19 March 2021. Well, I thought I'd do something slightly different this week and uh, go through one of my most recent articles that will be posted here later today. Uh, but before I do, I do want to comment on the bond market. And as I've said many times, it's the, as I refer to it, kings, of the, kings to the kingdom, it is the most important financial market by far. And there is seemingly trouble in the bond market. Certainly interest rates are f- being forced higher, which means bond prices lower. I just did an interview on Sprott Money. You might want to listen to and go into some of the ideas surrounding what the potential inevitability is regarding the debt markets and the perhaps inability of the powers that be to control it. So I'm going to leave it at that. You can go to Sprott Money. That will be posted. I'll have it on my Twitter account. But right now, back to the article. This is entitled, Why the Silver Bull Run is Inevitable. And this goes back to something I've talked about in previous lectures. But this is a chart I'll get to in a minute. But it was produced in Forbes magazine after Warren Buffett bought 130 million ounces of silver. It really was 129.7 if you want to split hairs. And what he did was he bought it at an all-time low on an inflation-adjusted basis. So this chart I've used in lectures in the past. haven't really talked about it in quite a long time. But you see the chart starts at the year 1364, if I can read that, or 44 rather. And at that price on an inflation-adjusted basis. So this takes the inflation lie out of the silver price. So we're looking at constant, and this was done in 1998 dollars. So those have changed. We're, you know, 23 years ahead of that now, but we could do the same thing over again and we would get a chart that's inflation adjusted. So $400 here is the same as $400 here and $400 here and $400 here, which on a non-inflation adjusted basis is not true. So we're comparing apples to apples. I hope that's clear. If not, do a search engine, study it, read it, you'll get it. So what we see is way back in the mid-1300s, silver was about $400 per ounce, at least in 1998 dollars. And it stayed around that level all the way, and I'm just doing this roughly, as you can see. I'm going to make come down here to about 1544, so about 200 years. And then it kind of dropped, came down, and it stayed around this level, which I'm going to call $200 an ounce. And I'll call that from 1564 to, let's just take 1744, so another 200 years. So 200 years at $400 silver, 200 more years at at, um, $200 silver. And then you get down here into this range here, and we'll flatten that out around 100. And that was from roughly... Oh, 1784, it looks like, to 18, we'll call it 84. We'll make that 100 years. So people talk about, you know, what silver's true value, what is it worth, blah, 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 blah. This is history. This is fact. This is what it was considered. And remember, during this entire period, silver was really one thing. It was money. That's all it was, which there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's just that today, silver is not just money. It's really an industrial commodity as well as money. So then after the crime of 1873, writing this thing, that when silver was demonetized, you see it fell off really substantially because it wasn't considered or used as money anymore. Well, it was still in circulation, but it wasn't, um, it was demonetized. You can look up crime of 1873 and get a better look at that if you're interested. And then we had the big move up in 1980, where we got to a ratio of about 16 to 1. And then right here in 1998, when this came out, is where Warren Buffett bought, which is, as I say in this article, an inflation-adjusted all-time low in the silver price. So as you can see, that, as I say in the article, timing is everything, especially in a fast-moving market. Now, remember, I've said that... uh, Silver will scare you out or wear you out. It can be very fast moving. It can spike up and down and really scare you, depending on what side of the market you're on. 
or it can wear you out and just go in a trading range for seemingly forever and just grind and grind and grind. So it doesn't have a habit of just being very volatile. It has a habit of being very volatile at times and very uh, sleepy, I'll say, at other times. <clears throat> so a reminder that 90% of the movement lasts 10% of the time. Remember, that's just a guideline. It's not exact. But the third leg up is used at the most powerful. It's not in price appreciation, but not in time duration. So as this article points out, uh, there are asymmetric gains to materialize, I believe, silver particularly more than gold for a number of the reasons that I've outlined. And part of it in this article is how much has been used by industry over the years. It's important to, and I stress that this is long term when investing in these assets. It's not a in and out situation. It can be, and certainly if that's your prerogative, I wouldn't say don't. But as far as physical buyers, I think you should have a longer term perspective. Um, you know, as I say, owning it this week and looking for next week is rather short sighted. Purchase small amounts continuously is best for most people. When it accelerates, you want to reevaluate your goals. So sometimes when it starts to accelerate, the trend is established and you could jump on early in the breakout and do well, but you definitely have to reevaluate. So it just depends. Even if you buy it silver at a new high, it will go higher once it breaks the current trading range. So we've already been to 50 twice, nominally 50 in 2011 is far less valuable than 50 in 1980. I think we all know that. If it was on that inflation-adjusted chart, you would see that. It would show you what the actual dollar price in 1998 dollars was. In fact, um, I guess we could do that back here. So in this inflation-adjusted chart, when we hit the spike high here, it shows it to be, uh, according to this graph, uh, looks like around $45 or something like that. So anyway, there we are. Uh, so <clears throat> the industrial demand two decades ago was 35% of the silver market. Industrial demand was roughly one third of the entire market. Today, it accounts for over half of the silver market. Silver is a crucial part of all things digital in the digital age, electronic, electrical, etc., if the world had switched to solar power, we really wouldn't have enough silver to do it in today's technology. Could it change? Yes. Would it? It certainly has been thrifted or uh, much, a lot of silver has been removed for the same amount of wattage that uh, was available on the earlier silver panels. In other words, the um, efficiencies have been increased, so less silver is used per panel to get the silver uh, output that's equal. However, you can only do that for so long. Yet there could be some breakthrough that's, uh, you know, uh, that maybe exists that I'm not even aware of right now. But regardless, to power everybody's solar is so, sort of a joke. There isn't enough silver to do it, um, <clears throat> and it's a bit of a pipe dream, at least at this point. So with the green paradigm, however, there will be more and more silver usage and uh, there's, so there's lots of demand on silver right now, not only industrial, that's pretty steady and maybe increasing with the green push, but also the investment demand is extremely robust. So I'll go ahead and sign off for this week. Remember to go to our main website, themorganreport.com. There's an opt-in page here. You can put in a name and an email and hit the join button, and then you will uh, get an opt-in where you say, you're not a bot, that you are real, and your email is valid. And you'll get on our weekly perspectives and everything I mail during the week. You usually mail out about three times a week. It's almost all content-driven. There is ads very rarely, but it does happen occasionally. Sometimes they're what I call public service announcements. And that is the free part of the site. And if you're so interested in subscribing, just hit the subscribe tab here. You can play the video. You can scroll down the sales page and determine whether or not it is something that you want to have or do not. Books are here. Silver Manifesto, we still have about 500 left. Sorry we can't ship to the UK. It's just too cumbersome. Uh, the other book, of course, is Second Chance, which is uh, quite well received, actually. And that's here. Some people buy them both. Many people buy them both, actually. 
And it is second chance time. I really do believe that. We are starting the third leg up, and it will be an interesting ride. Remember the bull market. The bull shakes off as many people as possible on the way up. We're in that time frame right now. Why is silver moving? There's all this demand and on and on and all that. I understand. We're still in the trading range, but uh, don't let this quietness in the market scare you out. I think it's just a matter of being somewhat patient again before we break through the overhead trading range into new territory. And lastly, this is our blog page. This is something that uh, I've paid for. It just goes through 20 silver companies. I pick most of them. Not all of them are in the silver in the Morgan Report. And the Morgan Report has more than silver companies. We have uranium that's done quite well. We have an asymmetric trade technology company. Uh, but we do have some royalty companies. And most of it's focused on precious metals right now. So uh, it's up to you to determine how to use it. We give you an outline how to use the Morgan Report when you become a member. So... I'll leave it at that. Great weekend to everyone. I'll be back next week with another weekly perspective.